Hey guys, how are you doing? Hopefully everyone's doing great today. Myself, I am doing a little bit better. I'm still a little bit congested, so my voice might sound a little bit different than this next couple of videos um, throughout this week, of course. Uh, but thankfully, my wife, my baby, everyone's fine now. Our health is improving, so thank you again for all of the great wishes. By the way, we are, were you able to check out uh, yesterday's video? We are introducing a new instructor to the team, so if you haven't checked it um, right now, just go there. Pause this, go there. I'm not going to go anywhere. We'll continue with the lighthouse in just a second. Uh, so yeah, make sure to go and check him out. And uh, so let's go. Today we're going to continue with the lighthouse and we're actually going to be jumping into um, uh, Seabrush. As you can see, I've been uh, going, I'm still <laughs> quite behind uh, the last week since uh, we had like this health issue. Um, I wasn't able to continue as much. So as you can see, I just like went in here. Remember the four little uh, like long, thick, small, small, thick and small uh, like locks that we did. So I'm just duplicating them and I'm little by little starting to open or, or create this sort of um, a frame for the whole thing. So as you can see, I, I deleted the floor that we had before and now we have this thing. So this is just a, a kit bashing technique, if you wish, where we're going little by little attacking each specific piece. I think I definitely need to go back to this uh, texture right here and desaturate a little bit so it matches like the overall tone. Uh, maybe this one's as well, just desaturate them a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, things are looking very, very nice. So I'm probably going to be doing this throughout the week. I'll, I'll throw in a nice little uh, lesson for you guys about the scene. And while I do that, I'll just keep like plugging and chugging in with all of the different like uh, locks that we still miss. So I'm still missing like all of this scaffolding over here. I'm missing this like lamppost. Uh, we, need, we do need to do this one, but I, I want to do something else before that one. And that is, I, I want to do this uh, rock right here because um, I do, fi I found that it is a little bit tricky to, to go on this specific area right here. And uh, it might be a good idea to just sculpt this uh, in, a, in a better way. So I can definitely tell here that as you can see, there's a little bit of a, of a flat area here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring a cube. And I'm gonna position this cube where I would expect this like overhang of the rock to be, which is about there. You can see like this scaffolding right there. It's, it's kind of like on this like border right here. And I'm actually gonna grab like this guy right here grab this face and just like push it in because I, I, I want more of that sort of like like a shelf over there so let's push this one right there and I know that that's like generally the the like the the <laughs> I'm just stammering starting uh, that's the general way of in, in how this thing is looking right so I don't need to be super precise back here but I do want to give this a, a nice sort of like uh, effect or, or, or look. So I'm going to grab both of these things. I'm actually going to combine them into a single guy. And I'm going to say mesh and triangulate. Very important that we triangulate because I don't want to have any issues with uh, end guns inside of Sievers. So once this is triangulated, I'm just going to say file, export selection. And we're going to bring this into our project. Um, let's set our project real quick here. There we go. So assets, remember lighthouse. And let's create a new one called uh, cliff. Now, eventually, eventually, we're gonna be using textures to like create this uh, or, or give this the most or get the most out of this thing. However, I do wanna I do wanna show you Nanite, which is one of the newest things inside of Unreal Engine Five. Uh, we're gonna be using Unreal Engine Five, by the way, uh, once we get into the engine. So stay tuned. The series is gonna it's gonna go for a little while. So uh, as long as you guys keep supporting and liking the video, we're we're totally fine. We're we're, we're totally cool like keeping this thing up but we do need the support that we we are constantly monitoring the the um, what's the word the progress of the video so if we see that a video or a series is, is uh, having a good progress then we keep going if we don't see a good progress then we change things up so that you guys uh, help us with the uh, with that okay so here I'm just gonna go into my basic material and um, I'm actually gonna go here you, you can see that I have this basic material this is the one that I normally use it does seem like it so I'm just going to click here, save as starter material, so that every time I start, I start with this one. I hate the like the, um, the other one, the, like the red material looks super ugly. And I'm just going to dynamish this real quick. And there we go. So the trick for cliffs and rocks and, and formations is to, here, let me show you, is to create a very nice shape breakup, okay? 
I would say that that's the most important thing. Like you can see this thing here. There's a lot of like shapes breaks, shape breakups pretty much everywhere. Now, most of this, we are going to be using textures to get that, of course. Uh, but it's a good uh, exercise to actually go here and sculpt it yourself. So I personally like using Trim Dynamic. You guys know I'm, I'm a huge fan of Trim Dynamic. And what we can do is I can just like clay build up here, like start building up this thing. And then with Trim Dynamic, I'll just flatten up like this different shapes. Like you're never going to have like a perfectly 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to like flatten these things out and create this sort of like very nice texture around the cliff. It's the same thing here. Then again, with clay build up, we can just go here. Dynamish. We're going to be dynamishing constantly to, to generate or create a nice effect here. Now I'm going to introduce you to one little secret here. This is a... Uh, this secret, I think I do show it on the on the intro to ZBrush course, um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be like small small gift from for all of you guys that are that stay all the way until this point in the video, which we're not far in the video. How how long has this been? Five minutes. It's just five minutes, but sometimes people only watch the video for like two or three minutes. Hopefully, you guys are not those. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into Lightbox and in my brushes here, there's a very nice brush that we can use. It's on the mallet and it's called the mallet fast, mallet fast two. And I really like this brush because it, it, it kind of like mallets and mallet is like a hammer. So it hammers the surface as you can see here and it creates this very nice angle. See that? So every time I tap, we create this like fragments over there and you can actually change this to like a spray and you're going to create like this very, very nice, like a rocky texture to it. See how we get like this, this very like harsh planes. So I'm going to lower the intensity a little bit. And this, even though it doesn't seem like much, this is going to be more than enough to create a very nice uh, effect on the rock because it's pushing the, the normals like in and out, right? So it's giving me some, some very nice, um, let's call it uh, shape and noise, silhouette. So that silhouette with a very nice like rock texture that we're going to get online, uh, it's going to give us an amazing, an amazing uh, look here. So I'm going to go back to my train dynamic. Now, do, should we go all the way over here? If we're doing a level where people are going to be able to walk to every single side of the level, then yeah, you should do it. And I mean, right now we're not doing the full level, right? Like we're only focusing on this like specific shot uh, of the of the element, but it's not a good, it's not a bad idea to just like go here and, and add this sort of effect. So see how very nice, like fragmented sort of thing we get. Now, don't worry about the fact that this is super low poly. That's that's actually perfectly fine. Because again, we're actually going to be using this as a base to project the texture on top of it. So so the main thing I'm, I'm worried about is I just, just want to make sure this looks very, very natural, right? So let's go back here with a trim dynamic. Remember, we had like a cube over here. I think it was over there. So let me like build up the cube again. That one's very important because that's where like the scaffolding is uh, like supporting itself. So I definitely need to like build this up right there. So let's dynamesh. There we go. And I'm going to show you one new tool that we have, which is a knife tool. So I'm going to mask this out. Actually, not the knife tool. I'm just going to invert the mask. And I'm going to use my clip brush, which is this uh, clip curve. Where is it? Here, clip curve. We're gonna draw a line and whatever is on the gradient is gonna be pushed towards the rest of the geometry like this. So see how we created a flat surface and then we dynamish then, there we go. We have our little square right there. So again, control shift, click over here. Oh, I forgot, sorry. I remember yesterday I mentioned that we now have this little um, car neck thing. So you can see the, the shortcuts, there we go, sorry. I'm getting used to it, so. so there we go. So now I'm just gonna start like, or continue building up here. And there we go. Like, let's say we want like another little cliff over here on this area right here. So I add the volume like this, dynamish to get a little bit more resolution, mask out that volume that I want to flatten out, invert, then control shift. And we're going to select clip curve and draw a line where the gradient is pointing to the upper side. You can use a space bar to move this around and then just boom, that's going to flatten everything to a, a nice little cliff there. And when we do dynamish, uh, everything's going to be like flattened out. Let's just trim dynamic and then just like give this a little bit of a better form, right? So yeah, that's that's how you do this sort of effect. 
Now, again, we are going to be using textures on top of this. So the only thing that I want that I want is to create like the shapes of the object, because on top of this shapes is where we're going to be using our, our texture. So I'm not too worried about like actually sculpting the rocks. If you want to do that, go for it. Be my guest. However, it is going to be quite time consuming. And in this particular case, it, it's not really going to be that useful. So let me give you a couple of examples uh, like games where this has been used. I'm not sure if you guys have played uh, Genshin Impact. But if you take a look at how they manage this, it's a very similar process. Like they're not going to be hand sculpting every single rock. What they do is they sculpt the general shape of the rock, like this silhouette right here. And then they map a texture like this very obvious texture pretty much everywhere. But it's a, it's a single mesh. It, they just like carve in and out on the different things and there's a rock texture uh, placed on top. Very similar to how they did it on the Breath of the Wild, for instance. So, so that's what we're gonna do. And I, I think I can show you uh, how to do it in just a second. So, so let's, let's just keep going here. And there we go. Now, this is not a lot of geometry, as you can see here, like this is only 55,000 triangles, which is about 100K, uh, which is fine. I mean, we, we could definitely take this into, into Maya and we, we wouldn't have a problem. Uh, let me take a look at the, at the topology. Yeah, the topology is not bad. Let me dynamish real quick. Yeah, I mean, the topology is not bad. Like, we could definitely take this. Um, actually, I think I am going to take this. So let's just... I'm just going to add a little bit of volume here. Like, I don't want things to be, like, perfectly flat. I want to have, like, a little bit of, uh, you know, something. And there we go. Let's go back to our nice uh, mallet fast. That's a little bit of... Let's definitely lower the intensity. Let's go back to like a normal freehand. Cause I just wanna like, let's push this. I'm just gonna carve in a couple of like cliffs here and there just to get again, some variation, right? So there we go. Now, if any of you is doing this tutorial and they, and you guys want me to share this like a uh, geometry with you, like this this cliff that I'm just sculpted here, let me know and I'll be happy to, to upload it onto uh, one of our, our drive folders so that you guys can have access to it. I mean, it's just very simple geometry, as you can see here, like no big deal. Uh, but again, if you just want it, like we can, we can uh, get it to you somehow. So I'm just gonna like train dynamic everything here. Again, just, just I, I just wanna make sure that I'm using as much of the resolution as possible. So just a quick change in silhouette here and there. Again, just one way you can change or check this is going to flat color. And what you want is you wanna avoid any like super flat surfaces. So as long as you have like points like pushing in and out, I think we're going to be fine. Make it seem natural, of course, like maybe like a little cave in there. Like all that sort of stuff that is going to be like super, super helpful with the, with the whole thing. There we go. So you might say this looks horrible, Abraham. Like how, how is this going to look like a little bit cooler? Can we make this look a little bit cooler? Yes. Uh, in fact, one of the things we can do is we can actually go into Damon Standard and just like push like some like big lines over here. And again, this is our important because these are the things that are gonna give shadow and volume to the to the cliff face because yes, we're gonna have a texture that's gonna have normal maps and stuff, uh, but the main shapes of the cliff, those are the ones that we're sculpting right here. So this is where, where we need to really spend a little bit of time to, to create like the sort of like changes in the in the rock, right? So so make sure that if you're doing this by yourself, you, you uh, use enough time like don't don't underestimate how like the kind of detail that we want because again like imagine like there's a shadow coming from this side like this shadows you're not going to get those shadows from the uh from the normal map those shadows are going to be coming from the actual sculptor so that's why it's important to to create this sort of shape right so let's go there and that's it i, I kind of like this again once we have a texture that's i think that's a, a nice uh element i think i definitely want to like sharpen this because I remember on the concept yeah the cliff is really sharpened over there so I'm gonna use my knife tool in this case control shift I'm gonna use the knife curve and then just like as you can see there I just like carved a whole freaking hole out of the other mountain so let's go like that like that so that's really like a cliff and then we go back with the trim dynamic and then just soften the the different sides over here there we go. Let's add just a, again a little bit of texture. We can carve out more stuff. 
So this literally looks like erosion, you know, when water hits uh, rocks, uh, after a long period of time, you're gonna get this sort of erosion. And as you can see, it's a very like freeform kind of a style of uh, a sculpting. If we were gonna like do a bake, a bake out of this, I would definitely like spend a long time like making sure this looks as nice as possible. But I think like this is kind of like the like the shot that we're gonna have. I think this is gonna look uh, perfectly fine. So um, I'm just gonna take this one like as is. Like I'm not gonna do a decimation or anything. I'm just gonna keep it like as is. I'm just gonna export this. Let's go back to our projects. 2021. Next to live assets. Lighthouse cliff, and let's call this cliff sculpt and we go into Maya we delete this guy file import uh, again assets lighthouse cliff cliff sculpt there we go and look at that now I definitely see that uh, well a couple of things first as you can see uh, each poly group got separated into different pieces that's a no-no we don't want that so I'm gonna grab all of the pieces here I'm gonna combine them and I'm gonna say edit mesh merge and that's going to merge all of the vertices that are pretty much on top of each other so now everything uh, should be one i'm not going to smooth this out i mean it's a little bit heavy we could decimate it it's not the end of the day it's, it's 100k triangles it's it's fine uh but we could decimate it here what i definitely want to do is i'm going to actually scale this down so that the distances are not like super uh intense right here because i i really want this thing to be up there uh another thing we can do is i can move the pivot point like up here to the floor which the floor does seem to match like close to what we want and then from there, we're going to scale. So it should be a little bit easier. Let's scale a little bit more. So that's where like things should be. As you can see, we're, we're losing quite a bit of cliff right here. So another thing I can do is I can just like grab all of this guys, do a, like a soft selection, and then just like push this guys down. Again, not really caring much about like the geometry and stuff, like the shadows and all of that kind of things. That's what I care about. And yeah, that looks a little bit better. So a little bit closer to what we had. Of course, we could have brought in like a copy of the scaffolding to, to ZBrush to get like the perfect uh, like effect here. But I think something like this is is fine. Like like this round right here, we can like make it go lower a little bit and well, probably not that much. <laughs> Might need to like modify like maybe here we can like just like scale this up and give it like a little bit of a of a, of a leg to stand like let's grab that one or like this one right here and just now nah, that's gonna distort the image too much don't worry I'll, I'll, I mean I mean maybe we can just like duplicate this one this one goes like really really long there um, it doesn't go that long as you can see there but it's, it's close uh, now here's where, where the fun fun begins so I'm gonna go mesh display soft and edge and this is gonna give me like a very soft shadow for for everything here and I'm going to say um, UV, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do an automatic mapping. Let's see how, how it goes. Maybe the automatic was a bad idea. No, that's fine. It seems to be working. So now if we take a look at the UVs, this is going to be a horrible UV, by the way. I mean, this is going to be like completely ludicrous. But it will give me an idea of how things are going to look. I am actually going to be texturing this inside of uh, Substance later on. Uh, or inside of, um, what's the word? Um, Unreal, actually. Just want to check how we're doing on time. Okay, we're fine. So let's go again to Polyhaven. I'm using Polyhaven because it's free, but if you guys have access to Substance Source, you might want to check that one out as well. So for instance, we have this Aerial Rocks. That's pretty cool. This one's also pretty cool. So let's see if we can find like a cliff side. Oh, this is great. It's like a rocky ground. Uh, it looks very, very cool. Let's see if there's another one, like a little bit less ground and more rock. Uh, well, there's a lot of bricks, not a lot of rock. So I think we're going to have to settle with that one. That's fine. I mean, it's a good texture. So let's go for it. There you go. It's going to look a little bit weird because there's going to be like like rocks like, um, like kind of pushing out. So, I mean, that's what we have right now. Uh, later on, I might use a couple of others. And uh, I want to download this uh, AO Diffuse. Yeah, that's, that's the one. So download, and remember we had our nice little uh, assets here. Let's go lighthouse cliff. Let's show this, and we're gonna extract, open archive, 
open the textures. We're going to do one, two, three, four. Right now, I just want the diffuse and the normal. That's the only one that I'm going to see inside of Maya. So I'm going to go here, assign a new material. Let's add a Maya, a Lambert. And on the Lambert, let's do the history. We're going to call this M Cliff. And we're just going to plug in the colors. So color here. And we're going to do um, assets. Where is the lighthouse cliff? And we do the diffuse. There we go. So of course, if we do this, it's going to look completely horrible. I know that. Don't worry. Let's jump onto the hyper shell real quick. Uh, let's grab the um, M cliff, map it. And the first thing I need to find is what's going to be like the like the good number, right? Like what, what amount of like uh, tiling do we need for this to work? Um, and I'm going to start with something like a 10. So 10 and 10. Uh, it's not, it's better, not great, it's better. Let's try like a, like a 20 and 20. There we go. That's a little bit better. You can see that definitely you have a little bit of an issue and it's repeating. We can try and use this a stagger thing where, where it's going to like modify where things are. So this is breaking up the surface a little bit more. Uh, again, not great. We're going to be doing it the proper way later on. It's just going to get a general idea of how this thing is looking. Um, so let's add our normal map now. So let's go here into the cliff. Bump mapping, file. It's going to be tangent space normal. And it's going to be the... Lighthouse, a cliff, a normal. There we go. Now we did 2020, so it's going to be 2020 as well. You can also just like plug this in into the UV coordinates. And if we delete this one, uh, we still should have the same effect. Uh, one thing, yeah, I forgot about this one. Remember, the normal map should be set to our raw because the normal map does not add any sort of like, uh, or we don't want any sort of like correction, light correction here. Let's turn this on. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> again, not great. Actually, this is not tileable. I thought it was tileable. It's not tileable. That's why we can see it. Okay, I'm going to show you another trick. I'm just going to grab this guy right here, go to like a like a front uh, view right here and goes and say, I'm going to say UV. And I'm going to do a planar mapping based on the camera base projection. And that way, it's kind of like taking a picture. So we should see like the texture like nicely laid out there. Let's go back here to the UVs. I'm gonna get rid of stagger. That's weird. I, I really thought this was gonna be tileable. It seems like it's not. It's very weird. Or did I did I mess something up? It's very weird. But yeah, I mean you can see here with this like sort of like a camera view projection. Things are looking a little bit better. Um, at least we have the shape of the object, which is <coughs> one of the most important parts. Like the normal maps and everything. Like the general shape of the object is looking is looking good. However, the texture definitely needs some work. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the to the Lambert one. I think I think this is good. Um, but I wanna I wanna give it another go. So I'm gonna stop right here, guys. I'm gonna stop the video right here with just just basic like shapes of the cliff. And then tomorrow we'll texture this. And now I'll show you like the proper way to texture it. Uh, so that we don't get any sort of like distortion. Uh, we can work with some very nice maps and uh, and we get a general idea of how this thing is gonna be working or looking. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. As you can see, uh, our little like uh, lighthouse here is looking better and better each day. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is a big project. I, I wasn't aware of how <laughs> how difficult this is gonna, was going to be when we started. But as long as you keep supporting the channel, as long as you keep liking it, and as long as you keep uh, sharing this with your friends and everyone, I'll be happy to continue. I, I want to bring this all the way to competition, but you guys are going to be the, the shot colors here. If we have the views, if we have the likes, and if we have the engagement, we'll be happy to continue. We're also going to be introducing some other videos there's a couple of things I want to talk about Seabirds 2022. So maybe we'll do like two or three videos about the lighthouse each week. And then uh, we'll probably use like the weekends to share some tricks and tips. And yeah, if we have more news, uh, I'll be happy to share. Let us know in the comments if you're okay with having more than one video a day. Like we, we don't want to rob you of your time, guys. So if, if you guys want to hear more about this, I'll be happy to try and have like a little bit of lighthouse and then some couple of like Seabirds and substance techniques. Like we can mix and match. I I'm fine. But I, I need you guys to let us know what things you guys want to see here in the channel okay so that's it for tonight and i'll see you back tomorrow bye bye